Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corbett and I will be your host today for a rather short EU4 video. This was a small request I got a few weeks ago that I never really addressed, and seeing as I'm a little bit short on time this week, I decided this would be a little bit easier for me to produce for you guys. So the request came in basically asking what would be good hotkeys to memorize for playing EU4. Obviously, you can do pretty much anything you need to in EU4 without ever having to touch a keyboard, which is one of my favorite things about the game. However, there are a lot of shortcuts that are useful to know, some of which can actually change your gameplay in some sort of a meaningful way. So, here are the ones I end up using the most to make my Let's Plays go just a little bit faster. Let's start with the shortcuts that affect the general UI and the menu pop-ups. Plus and minus control speed, but since you don't often end up changing speed, I recommend you just hit the buttons anyway. Hitting tilde opens the console menu for you filthy cheaters or people who like to take these cinematic screenshots. You can use the top row of your letters on your keyboard to cycle through your hotbar of map modes. Tapping the same key again cycles through what is saved in that slot. It's kind of useful if you have all of your map modes memorized. F is used to open the Find Province menu or to pay respects. I use this one a lot because I actually have no idea where anything in the game is, especially when you take culture renaming into effect. C and Z are used to confirm slash dismiss on the black background pop-ups. So when you've just built 39 buildings and cored another 27 provinces at the same time, you can hold down that bad boy and clear it in a second instead of getting clicking fatigue. I think hitting enter also does the same thing, but that's a little awkward to reach over to, so... And here's the most useful one for you noobs with less than 900,000 hours in the game, that I'm really not even asking you to remember, this is actually more of a demand. F11 is for screenshots, and F12 is for Steam screenshots. If you don't memorize these, you will actually be banned from the EU4 subreddit for causing the spontaneous combustion of multiple pairs of eyes. So that's your warning right there. Next, let's talk about armies and their useful shortcuts. You'll probably find these ones a lot more useful. G is for merging or grouping, if that is easier to remember, it's pretty simple. Using S is for splitting your army or navy in half, which is pretty useful for carpet sieging. Having more than one army selected will split them all in half, which is why that's useful. Obviously, using D to detach siege, there's really no need to explain why that's useful. You can also assign armies and navies to hotkeys really simply. All you need to do is have your army selected, hit control and whatever number you want to assign them to, and then hitting that number will select them. Double tapping that number will also pan the camera over to them. This is more useful for multiplayer when the game slowly turns into an RTS, so I don't use it in single player ever. Here's another helpful one that the game doesn't actually tell you for some reason, and that is shift consolidating. For how important this is, I am surprised that not a lot of people actually realize what this does. It's in the name, so obviously, the full shortcut if you want to use your keyboard is Shift and K, but no one actually uses K to consolidate because, I mean, it's all the way over, you'd have to either move your hand off the left side or move your right hand off the mouse, which no one really wants to end up doing. So basically, you just hold Shift and you hit the consolidate button on your armies. This will do the regular consolidate, but it will leave you with empty regiments that will fill themselves in over time. I know you're thinking, wow, that is absolutely worthless, why are you wasting my time? And that's where you'd actually be wrong, you see. Having full strength fighting units are much better than having half strength units, obviously, so the consolidate comes into play there. But your army could also be too far away to send the fresh regiments from home in a timely fashion. Those empty units don't end up fighting in battles, and they have men teleport to them even in enemy territory, so be sure to memorize that one because it actually kind of matters a little bit. And finally, we have the mouse shortcuts that are kind of pretty useful to remember. Click and drag is the superior version of selecting units, which most people probably do know, but maybe you didn't know that adding shift to that will add or subtract the units that you're currently selecting from the ones you already have selected. Likewise, using control will actually exclude armies and land-based units and select only navies, which is kind of really helpful. And then next we have right clicking on the war emblem to open up negotiations with the leader instantly. 
Alrighty then, so that was kind of a short video, and despite the very, very short length, I hope you did enjoy it, and if there are any more secret special hotkeys that you did not find on this list, then spread the word down in the comment section below, because I personally at least would be kind of interested in finding out what you guys end up using. This is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day.